by the multidimensional uh, poverty peer network, uh, where Sabina plays a key role and a very important leader, leadership role, but I would like to thank in advance because this is a tremendous network that has helped many countries in order to approach such a complex problem as uh, poverty. We understand that uh, this site event has taken place frequently uh, in the surroundings of the United Nations Statistical Commission, and it has become a must in all of our agendas every year. And I'm happy to share uh, this stage with new colleagues and very good friends that have joined today to this important conversation in order to uh, have a thorough review about what has happened about countries in the implementation of multidimensional poverty measures, and more importantly, during the pandemic of the COVID-19 disease. The fact that we meet today sends a strong message that conveys our will to advance in the strengthening multidimensional measures of poverty. And at the same time, it plays an important role of collaboration and sharing experiences as a way in order to enlighten the efforts of many countries that are looking forward to deploying such important measures as multidimensional poverty indices in their countries. It, for those that do not know me, I am Juan Daniel Oviedo. I am the general director of the National Statistics Office of Colombia, which is called DANI. And together with Bangladesh, China, and South Africa, we are part of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network Steering Committee. And one, in the case of Colombia, we are one of the founding parties of the network. The NPPN is the South-South network of more than 60 countries in 19 international agencies that are looking forward to target the measurement of multidimensional poverty as a way to illustrate public policy and more importantly, social policies in our countries that are targeted in such a way that we could advance in the 2030 agenda of uh, eliminating poverty of our societies. This side event traditionally has been shared by a very, very well appreciated colleague, uh, Ruizenka Maluleke, who is the chief statistician of South Africa. However, due to some agenda issues, he could not join us today. And the secretariat of the MPPA has honored Colombia, and in this case, personally, myself, to have the opportunity to share this session, and more importantly, to uh, play a very important role in uh, allocating the contributions of several countries as regards of the multidimensional poverty index. I'm very proud of this opportunity that Sabina has provided to me because myself, as a professor of economics and at the same time as a statistician since 2018, I'm completely convinced that statistics and this kind of indices as the multidimensional poverty index is a key role in order to illustrate effective public policy and more importantly, evidence-based public policy that is going to contribute to alleviate poverty in our countries. This side event today brings together countries to discuss the use of multidimensional poverty data in order to leave no one behind which is one of the most important objectives of the Sustainable Development Goals. As you may know, and this is a common agenda that we face during the pandemic, COVID-19 has increased the vulnerabilities of our population in a very heterogeneous set of dimensions. And that's why in such a case, in such an exogenous shock that we have faced in our countries, those multidimensional measurements are very sound 
in order to tackle in a very effective way which are the channels under which the social and economic vulnerabilities that have arisen from COVID-19 have impacted our population and at the same time have impacted not only the national, subnational, but also regional and global agendas of alleviating poverty in our societies. That's why the use of multidimensional poverty indices becomes a very important tool in order to be more effective in the recovery, in the building back better of our societies, and more importantly, of leaving no one behind in this recovery agenda that most of our countries have been following in the last months. In the recent year, we have witnessed several kinds of innovations in the multidimensional poverty index measurement. We have seen some countries that have updated the methodology, have included new characteristics or new variables in the measurement of the multidimensional poverty index as it's the case of Mexico and Colombia, that I will have the opportunity myself to share some experiences in the Colombian case. And these updating are uh, allowing the inclusion of new information sets, new MPI variables, and at the same time to integrate the MPI with, for example, very strategic demographic information as that which is grasped by population and housing census in our countries. And at the same time, this integration of the multidimensional poverty index with some census grasped variable is going to improve the possibilities of disaggregation and to produce reliable and granular multidimensional poverty measurements in our societies not only at a national, but also at a subnational, urban and rural levels in our countries. At the same time, we have seen some new partners in the measurement of multidimensional poverty index. That's why we have seen examples of leadership and uh, innovation in the implementation of multidimensional poverty indices as Paraguay, Namibia, Malawi, Sri Lanka, and India, which launched their multidimensional poverty in year 2021. That's why that during this event, we will have the opportunity to hear the experiences of high level representatives from national statistics office or agencies that are tackling or targeting poverty alleviation programs in the countries which are members of the MPPM and at the same time, we are going to express which are the main progresses that we have uh, achieved during the pandemic and more importantly, during the year 2021. That's why I would like to apologize in advance for being very, very strict in the time allocations of the interventions of the country members, because we want to hear the diversity of experiences that have a very important role in deploying, why not, a very interesting and common discussions at the end of the session. Finally, besides encouraging participants to share any questions and comments via the chat, I would like to also highly recommend to actively tweet during this event using the hashtag UNSC, United Nations and Statistical Commissions, and also NPPN, which are the strategic partners in this site event in the surroundings of the United Nations and Statistical Commissions of the year 2022. And that's why we are going to have a very uh, a previously coordinated agenda under which taking advantage of the luck of being the chair of this session, I would like as a chief statistician of Colombia to share with you some issues related with the main advancements of the multidimensional poverty index measurement in the case of Colombia during the year 2021. That's why I'm going to allow myself to share my screen 
in order to share in a very brief way some very important experiences that we have seen during the uh, year 2021 in the case of Colombia. In order to be very brief, uh, we would like to share with you a um, general uh, perspective of our multidimensional poverty index that you had the opportunity to see how in 2020, we had the opportunity due to the integration of uh, information from the population and housing census and administrative records linked to health records to have a census-based multidimensional poverty index measurement that was disaggregated even at the street block level in the case of urban areas in Colombia. And it was tremendously important in order to target some emergency measurements at the local, regional, and national level in order to help people facing poverty during the most hard times of the pandemic in the year 2020. In this case, remember that for Colombia, the multidimensional poverty index covers five pillars, education, children and youth, labor market, health access, and housing conditions. Five pillars or five dimensions that aggregate 15 indicators and the main source or the official source of the multidimensional poverty index is the quality of life national surface or the living standard survey, as we know it in the standard methodology of national statistics offices. But in the pandemic and during the pandemic, there was a very important challenge in order how to measure some conditions of childhood and youth inside the multidimensional poverty index. More importantly, as you might see, we are looking forward for the characteristic of a school not attendance due to the lockdowns that we face in our country. And at the same time, the disruption of presential or in-presence education services during more than 18 months in the case of Colombia. That's why when we perform the living standard survey, the traditional way in order to measure a school not attendance is a very, very simple question that we perform in the living standard survey. Is Juan Daniel, for example, currently studying? Yes or no? And in the case of an answer which is related with no, we are going to have a deprivation of a, a school attendance in these households under which uh, Juan Daniel is living due to the information of the living standard survey. Since experience of the population and housing census, all social surveys in Colombia are not only georeferentiated or have the GPS coordinates of the survey or the specific survey, but also we grasp the identification number of all the respondents of the living standard survey. This allows us to face the very important challenge that we face during the lockdowns. Because if I was if I was under the situation of lockdown, I knew that I was inside the school system of Colombia and I was taking part of a very specific school close to my neighborhood or close to my house. But I did not have the opportunity to enjoy all the benefits of the educational system, and more importantly, in the case of Colombia, an in-presence educational system. That's why we needed to integrate the information of the household, in this case, the living standard survey, with administrative records in order, first of all, to catch the information of the children due to, to this or his or her identification number with the relationship of the school 
that he was attempting in a very specific way and to understand due to another school census that the National Statistics Office of Colombia performed, how this specific school was facing flexible measures in order to provide continuity of the educational service during the lockdowns. That's why, thanks to the identification number that we grasped of every children in the literature standard survey, we had the opportunity to integrate information with the enrollment system, which is administered by the Ministry of Education, and with a formal education survey that covers all the schools that from the official and non-official system in Colombia are providing education services to our children and youngsters. You see from the statistical perspective that from the survey of schools, official and non-official, public or private, that were providing educational services, several alternatives in order to have flexible ways of learning were offered to the students. But we needed to understand if, for example, in the case of virtual platforms, we had the opportunity to, on, to verify that the children that were answering the survey had computer access or internet access in their households. That's why, due to a very thorough analysis of contrasting the information of the LIPIC standard survey, the is educational survey or educational census and the involvement administrative records of the Ministry of Education, we managed to tie together the strategies that the school was offering in order to provide flexibility of school attendance due to or through virtual platforms with the uh, installed capacity or the access of internet or to computer or to uh, an, a, a, an intelligent smartphone in order to have access to internet in order to be connected to the continuity of the educational system. And that's why we are very proud to share this experience because this implies that the multidimensional poverty measures should be integrated with a census information and some other administrative records in order to face not only granularity challenges, but also strong conceptual challenges that we face during the pandemic. And provided that I have finished my experience, I would like to give the floor to uh, our colleagues from Ghana. In, the, in this case, Ghana, you have to remember that launched its national multidimensional poverty index in year 2020 and have incorporated MPI questions into censuses and surveys. And we have uh, ready uh, the video of Professor Samuel Covina, the government statistician of the Ghana Statistical Service, because unfortunately uh, our, our colleague did not have the opportunity to join us today and we are going to see the video right now. It's always a delight for Ghana Studies Class Service to be part of a discussion at this high level on multidimensional um, poverty. In the interest of time, I'm just going to go straight into what our plans are with the multidimensional poverty index in the next um, three years, actually starting from 2021 to 2024. One of the compelling reasons why we continue to be aggressive to pursue the reporting of multidimensional poverty index is the ability to relate that with other uh, measures of poverty, i.e. income poverty. And what we did in our last release of the multidimensional poverty index to identify the proportion of the population that are both consumption expenditure poor and also multidimensionally poor. Obviously, this came along with its um, disaggregated indicators, i.e. at the geographical level and across different dem demographic indicators. Moving forward for the period 2021 to 2024, as I indicated, we're tackling the issue of poverty from a much broader perspective using the multidimensional poverty index um, at a pivot. 
and how we've started that is incorporate questions within uh, recently ended data collection on the 2021 population housing census to reflect the indicators that we need for the computation of multidimensional poverty index. Actually, we did go ahead to include health indicators, specifically health insurance, to complement the education and living conditions variables that we use in the computation of multidimensional poverty index in our previous um, release. Some of the methodological issues that we're going to discuss moving forward across the network is how do we adjust for variables such as nutrition that were part of our health indicators in our previous release and which we would, we would not find in the um, census. Going forward, how we're we going to do this, as I said, we're tackling poverty from a broad perspective. So it's not just the multidimensional poverty index. From the census, we're going to use small area estimation to do poverty um, estimates, poverty mapping across our different districts and obviously do ranking of the poverty mapping um, in the country. We're also going to have a thematic and analytical report that will give us a sense of the correlate of multidimensional poverty index and also the um, analytical report will give us a sense of how this relates with other socioeconomic um, variables. For the period 2022 to 2024, we're going to roll out our annual household income and expenditure survey and the Ghana Living Standards Survey as well. All indicators would add to the richness of the poverty uh, measurements and releases. Specifically, once we do the annual household income and expenditure survey, we'll be again be able to compare the proportion of the population that are both monetary and non-monetary poverty. And this time, what we're going to add to it is we'll, we'll be able to capture the, the mobilities because we're going to have a panel data until 2020, poverty data was scarce, but from 2022, we're going to have quarterly multidimensional poverty index and also vulnerability index. Our quest to tackle poverty broadly will go beyond traditional sources of data, i.e. surveys and censuses, and indeed use administrative data that we've started collecting to also capture multidimensional poverty um, index. So clearly, we are using MPI as a pivot to tackle poverty and indeed vulnerability from a broader perspective. And I'm looking forward to more instructive engagement during this um, conference so that we can learn from each other. Thank you very much. It was a very, very, very clear presentation of how in the case of Ghana, the integration uh, of census information, service information, administrative records plays a very important role in order to improve the targeting uh, features of the MPI in order to illustrate, as I was mentioning before, effective public policies in our countries. Afterwards, um, uh, saying our best regards to uh, Professor Samuel Covina again, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, this, in this case, a very close a uh, case in, in the case of the regional perspective and uh, it's the case of or the country presentation of Costa Rica and I would like to invite Sofia Mora from Costa Rica's National Institute of Statistics and Censuses uh, in order to share their experiences in the updating of the MPI in a yearly basis and at the same time to see how the post-pandemic updates have performed in the country. And at the same time, we have to highlight that Costa Rica uh, has been a pioneer in using an MPI for budgetary allocation and for engaging the private sector in these poverty alleviation measurements that are urgent and very important in the current pandemic. So, Sofia, the floor is yours for five minutes. Thank you. Saludos, mi nombre es Sofía Mora y soy funcionaria del Instituto Nacional de Estadística y Censos de Costa Rica y formé parte del equipo que diseñó el Índice de Pobreza Multidimensional de Costa Rica en el año 2015. En primer lugar, quisiera agradecer la oportunidad de poder presentar nuestra experiencia y comentarles cómo el IPM de Costa Rica es una herramienta para la toma de decisiones. Para empezar, quería comentarles que, bueno, Costa Rica publicó por primera vez su índice de pobreza multidimensional en octubre de 2015 y desde entonces se ha publicado cada año, junto con los demás resultados de la Encuesta Nacional de Hogares, 
que es la fuente de datos que utiliza el IPM. En estos casi siete años, el IPM ha evidenciado cómo la política pública de Costa Rica tiene un impacto en la mejora de la calidad de vida de las personas y por ello, como se puede ver en el gráfico, la incidencia del IPM ha reflejado una disminución en este tiempo. Pero también, como lo pueden observar, se ha identificado cierto estancamiento en los últimos tres años, que están enmarcados en el contexto de la crisis nacional e internacional por el COVID-19. El IPM le ha permitido a los tomadores de decisiones identificar las áreas que han mejorado con el tiempo, como es el caso de la dimensión de vivienda, que es la que pueden ver en el gráfico en color azul, y especialmente en esta dimensión el indicador sobre el uso de internet que da cuenta de la mejora en el acceso a la tecnología. Pero también ha permitido identificar las áreas que requieren mayor atención, como lo son la dimensión de trabajo, que cada año incluye a más hogares con esa privación, y muy especialmente la dimensión de educación, que entre 2020 y 2021 tuvo un retroceso muy importante. Eso también lo podemos ver en este gráfico, que indica el aporte relativo de las tres dimensiones que les mencioné, educación, trabajo y vivienda, en el IPM en los, en los últimos años. En 2016, un equipo de consultores realizó una estimación del IPM con base en los datos del Censo 2011. Esto permitió identificar conglomerados de pobreza a niveles geográficos mínimos, los cuales se plasmaron en el sistema de mapas sociales del INEC, como lo podemos ver también en esta imagen. No obstante, esa estimación se basó en el cuestionario del Censo 2011, el cual no contempló en su diseño el IPM. Por ello, para el diseño del cuestionario del próximo Censo 2022, se evaluaron las preguntas necesarias para el cálculo del IPM censal y se logró incluir muchas de las variables necesarias o adaptaciones de ellas, de manera que se puede tener un IPM más aproximado al IPM oficial. Con los datos del censo piloto realizado en 2020, se logró estimar ese IPM censal y se, te, se determinó que es adecuado y que para 2022 se podrán tener los datos de pobreza multidimensional desagregados geográficamente para que podamos actualizar estos mapas. Así también, la implementación del IPM en Costa Rica generó además iniciativas privadas de gran importancia como es el IPM empresarial, que ha sido promovido por la organización Horizonte Positivo y que permite a las empresas identificar entre sus colaboradores a aquellos que residen en hogares en pobreza multidimensional. De esa forma, generar programas para apoyarles a salir de esa condición. Esta importante iniciativa ya está siendo promovida también para su uso en otros países. El Instituto Nacional de Estadística y Censos de Costa Rica se ha comprometido con la estimación y el análisis del IPM para que la información generada, la cual se basa en una encuesta de alta calidad y que además pronto se podrá tener con los datos del Censo 2022, brinde insumos fundamentales para que se sigan tomando decisiones basadas en evidencia y que los futuros tomadores de decisiones puedan identificar más claramente a dónde priorizar sus esfuerzos. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Sofia. And as you might have seen, this was a tremendous experience of Costa Rica uh, disaggregating the multidimensional poverty measure, measurement, having this challenge that is in the case of Colombia, we were successful to include the question surveys, uh, the, the questions that are going to provide indicators of the MPI, but at the same time, finding and uh, a balance of the trade-off in order to see how we could integrate the information of the census with the administrative records that could be or provide a more effective measurement of multidimensional poverty index. At the same time, we, it, it is a tremendous experience to translate uh, this MPI measurement to the entrepreneurial uh, dimension which is something very important, and also to target public policy, as Sofia was mentioning. So thank you very much to this leadership of INEC in the implementation of the MPI. And I would like, uh, in a very uh, warm and happy way, to introduce my colleague from Mexico, uh, under which uh, we have, in this case, the opportunity to uh, have the presence of Graciela Marque-Colin, 
who was appointed as the president of INEGI since January 2022, and will share with us the most recent updates that Mexico and INEGI and all the poverty measurement ecosystem in Mexico have performed during the last year. So Graciela, the floor is yours and welcome to this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juan Daniel. It's a pleasure to participate in this uh, high level panel. Um, as you mentioned, uh, in Mexico, we have this ecosystem of uh, poverty measurement. I uh, should start by saying that uh, INEGI, Mexico's National Statistical Office, is an autonomous agency. And uh, this is important in the sense that on how we generate information and how that information uh, is it's translated into the multidimensional uh, poverty index. INEGI then is at the same time a, a, producers, a producer of statistical and geographic information on the one hand, and on the other is the coordinator of the uh, national system of information. In performing this double role, INEGI follows national and international standards for the production of official information. So INEGI uh, is in charge of producing official information in Mexico. And that under our responsibility are the national census and the household service. In early 2020, Mexico was able to conduct the population census. And that, that was possible because it was, uh, it began right before the closure of activities due to the pandemic. Actually, some part, um, it, it was, the, the, the census uh, was running right before uh, it was decreed, uh, the, the closure of the, of the economy. In so doing, census and household surveys data were available for the computation of the multidimensional poverty index corresponding to 2020. So we got the information not only from the household surveys, but also from the census data. This year, 2022, we plan to conduct our biannual income and, and expenses household survey the basis for the MPI. In addition, we will produce the same survey on a quarterly basis to capture seasonal variations. So we're running two household surveys this year. The, the, the traditional one, the one we have been running for many, many years. And now we have this innovation of quarterly survey so we can observe seasonal variations. And we expect that this um, innovation, these two surveys would provide completely new information that we didn't have in the biannual uh, data. So as we speak, we have uh, people on, on all, all around Mexico asking families about their income and expenses. Since 2008, biannual income and expenses, ex, uh, expenses household surveys are the basis for the computation of the multidimensional poverty index. Another autonomous agency, the National Council of Evaluation, known as CONEVAL, is responsible for computing such index. So it's not in EGI in itself, but it's this uh, CONEVAL. It takes into account per capita current income, the average educational gap in the household, access to health services, access to social security, dueling, uh, dueling characteristics, space and quality, access to essential dueling related services, access to nutritious and quality food, level of social cohesion, level of access to paved road. Mexico's MPI, MPI this aggregation includes subnational level, sex, age, disability, education attainment, and indigenous language, language speakers. So this is the regular disaggregation that we got every two years. The MPI series runs from 2008 to 2020, as I mentioned before. 
Uh, but also geographic disaggregation is also available at municipal uh, level for 2010, 2015, and two, uh, 2020, which are the population uh, census dates. So we have uh, at a geographical level, we have a state disaggregation every two years and municipal disaggregation every five years. Like other statistical offices, INEGI analyzes how to produce information that better captures living conditions. From a statistical point of view, quality and effective access is a challenge we need to face by constant revision and updating methodologies, but also by using technological innovation for statistical production. We plan to examine how to, in, in, the, in this year, and maybe in, in, to be applied in, in 2024, we plan to examine how to me measure quality across all the variables included, included in the MPI. We think that's our next challenge. Uh, the use of, uh, image, of satellite images, for instance, would allow us to see effective, uh, effective water access for families. Not all, our, our statistics show that there are some, um, that, that there are access to water but we need to really uh, go, bef go beyond and, and examine how these satellite images allow us to, to um, conclude whether it, it's effective or not effective access. But this is, water, is just, water access is just one example. We, we do believe that uh, in, in joining the, the geographic uh, dimension would allow us to provide better information for those who compute the MPI. Thank you very much. It's, uh, this is what we have to share in, any, in INEGI. And uh, we already have some uh, initial effects of the COVID pandemic that shows that uh, poverty increased by 3.1 million people from 2018 to 2020. And we will be sharing with you the results that we have from the surveys conducted this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Graciela. And it was very, very interesting uh, comments that we see how you are uh, complementing the every two year survey with some new sources of information in order to cover new dimensions and at the same time to see how alternative sources of information not only substitute a multidimensional poverty index as those measurements that we can obtain from satellite imagery but at the same time could help satellite imagery to improve the quality or to contrast the information which is quite right. sort of something which is very very uh, interesting and very challenging in order to uh, improve the precision of the measurement of multidimensional poverty. So thank you very much for your contribution. And uh, of course, uh, Mexico uh, is a leading example of the multidimensional poverty index uh, measurement. And we will have many things to learn in those new uh, results that we are going to see in year 2022 and year 2025-24. We go straight to South Asia and we are uh, happy to welcome uh, Ms. Sanjukta Sandar, advisor of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, of India. And remember that India launched in 2021 as the first baseline of a rigorous multidimensional poverty index to monitor poverty in the country of India, and at the same time, not only to have a national, but also a subnational. This means a state level and a district level measurement of multidimensional poverty. So I would like, uh, and it's my pleasure, to give the floor to Ms. Sanjukta, 
in order to share the experiences of India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, I hope you can see my presentation. Uh, so friends and colleagues from uh, the MPPN and my dear friend Sabina, it's absolutely a pleasure to be a part of this peer network where I, uh, we get to share not only our India story, India, which is houses one sixth of the world's population at 1.33 billion, uh, our journey in constructing our first national MPI definitely with the, the guidance of Sabina, but also to learn from our friends here as to what are the challenges that one faces, particularly in terms of the statistical scenario and how does one integrate it with the leaving no one behind concept. So as Niti Aayog, uh, we are the nodal agencies for the SDG in the country. And with that, we also uh, got the mandate of uh, uh, creating the national MPI, a national MPI largely because obviously uh, reducing multidimensional poverty uh, is one of the big targets of SDG. And also it is something where we would uh, wanted to kind of use the, you know, utilize the global mechanism of global MPI to not only create a customized national MPI, but also to use these insights, the estimates which come up in terms of poverty and the reasons which contribute to poverty in terms of developing a very comprehensive action plan, an action plan which will lead to the reduction of poverty across the entire country. So with that, we, with that, we, uh, you know, we housed the entire MPI scenario in an institutional mechanism, something we did not want to do alone as the TIO, as one a part of the government of India, but we wanted to bring in a very consultative approach wherein we brought in all the related ministries and government of India, UNDP, OFI, and again, a process of outreach through all the state governments. Now you have to understand that India is a huge country of federal structure with 36 uh, units, subnational governments. And therefore we see uh, the movement in terms of how did one, one has to create an outreach, a sensitization towards a very technical policy tool such as the MPI. So um, obviously India, you know, we had the, uh, the money metric measure of poverty, which dates back to 2011, which could not be revised for various number of reasons. And that is where the global MPI became a benchmarking uh, mechanism for us to create a national MPI. But for that, the biggest challenge we had was the data systems. And more importantly, to create an understanding amongst all our federal units, our states and union territories, as to the utility of this new tool called the Multidimensional Poverty Index, not only to estimate and understand what is the incidence of poverty, what is the intensity of poverty, what are the factors which are leading to poverty, but most importantly, to trigger that reform action, to trigger targeted fund devolution and uh, particularly in areas which are not doing well in the country. So let me take you to what we did with the multidimensional poverty, the global MPI. So we added two, dim uh, two, dim two parameters, particularly in the health dimension and in the standard of living. And this was again, as I said, done through a very consultative approach with all our stakeholders, the entire government of India, all the state governments. And that's where we added two new indicators. One is the maternal health, which talks about a woman have getting four antenatal care visits, a pregnant woman who has received four antenatal care visits and has also had a delivery, which is assisted by a trained birth personnel. So that this factor was added. And obviously another factor which was added in standard of living is the um, whether the household had access to a bank account because bank account again, which means financial inclusion and the entire direct benefit transfer, the access to various schemes and programs of government of India. So with these two uh, indicators, basically it was uh, the national MPI was constructed. It was definitely a conscious decision to keep the national MPI very much aligned to the global MPI because that is where we would, you know, uh, try to create that entire reform actions, the interventions, so that the country's position also improves when uh, Sabina does the global rankings. And these are the kind of indicators which hold true and reflect the entire development narrative across the entire country. So with that, we created the, the national MPI and moving on to the results, we were very fortunate. We were able to launch the national MPI 
we started it in january around somewhere the mandate came in january 2020 and through a very deep process of working through the nfhs now the nfhs i must tell you the national family health survey that's the demographic and health survey for the country it is a it is a sample survey it's not a census like many of my colleagues have brought about in the, in in the, in their countries now uh, based on the sample survey of the nfhs uh, uh, NFHS 4, this is the baseline data, baseline report based on the micro data available uh, for the NFHS 4, which is in 2015. And we are very happy that uh, we'll be very shortly releasing the changes over time, the, the poverty estimates based on the 2020 numbers, which will take into account the, the pandemic and the impact of the pandemic across the entire country. That we'll be releasing maybe in, a, in three to four months once the household level data comes out for the 2020 NFHS. And this is the kind of granularity that you see. This is, you know, our how our states fare, and you you can see the broad numbers in terms of headcount ratio, intensity, and the MPR scores. So the reds are the worst, and the greens are the best. I'll take you to a further disaggregation of the at the rural and uh, uh, sorry, this is the district level. So uh, the smallest unit of administration in India is the district. And we have at current, we have around 700 districts in the country around in uh, the NFHS 4, which is 2015, we had 640 districts. So we were able to compute the, uh, the, uh, the MPI scores and the contribution of all the factors for as many as 640 districts of the country, which is what the power of this tool is, the kind of disaggregation, uh, disaggregated insights that it throws across all the districts of the country. And this is what we try to impress upon. We are trying to use it as a policy tool, trigger the policy action at the level of that district administration as to where should your funds go, where should the focus of action go, where should the targeted intervention go. So you can see the broad areas of red districts come in the northern part of the India. And these are the most backward districts of the country. That is where we are trying to target the most uh, backward districts, the backward regions, the backward population. And this, in a sense, is leave, leaving no one behind if nothing else is. So this, this is the power of the tool. And we are very grateful that we were able to do it. And we will be again doing it for the 2020 numbers very shortly. So I'll take you to the rural and um, urban disaggregation and the rural and uh, uh, the urban disaggregation we have not only for the states, but again to the level of the district. Again, the factors that you can see in front of you, uh, what, is the, what is the percentage of people in, in the country who are deprived across all these indicators? The green bars denote the improvements that have happened in the last five years. Huge improvements one can see in cooking fuel, in sanitation. And again, once the 2020 data comes out, we'll be able to track the improvements over time, not only for the entire country, but for all the states and union territories and also at the level of each of the districts. So what is it that we are trying to do? So uh, you know what? MPI, estimation of poverty, estimation of incidence of poverty, intensity of poverty, amazing. That helps us to understand where is it that the most vulnerable sections of the people lie? Where are they placed? Which are the districts? Which are the regions? And more so, what, are, what is that exact factor? Where, is it nutrition? Is it maternal health? Is it cooking fuel, which is leading to that kind of numbers? And that is where we move beyond the mere estimation of poverty. This is what we intend and we are doing in a, in a very fast, fast tracked manner in terms of not merely the estimation, but using the insights that are coming out of these numbers, these numbers which reflect what is the level of poverty, what is the factor of poverty into developing very state specific reform action plans, which are action plans targeting that actual reason, the contributing factor. And this we are not doing not only at the national level. So you see, as you, as you saw in the country of India, the size of India, the, the state with the lowest numbers of poverty is Kerala with just 0.71% uh, headcount ratio. And the state at the highest is Bihar 
Bihar with a headcount ratio of 51.91%. So there is an understanding that a national level MPI reform action plan cannot address the, the, you know, the context specific problems across such a diverse country like India. And therefore we are acting and we are engaging with all our state governments in order to create a state specific customized reform action plan, which will actually lead to the faster improvements, targeted reforms, targeted budget allocation and therefore we see we hope to see a huge movement in terms of improvement in the coming years so what has been the process of our reform action plan i know i'm, I'm trying to you know this is a statistical I, this is a side event of the un statistical commission but as niti ayog as as a think tank we try to move beyond just the, the we use the statistics in order to inform and trigger action as policymakers, I think this is what our biggest gain is, and this is what our biggest learning is from the MPI as a tool. And this is the step kind of a scenario that we have done in order to create a national MPI reform action plan. As you can see, the first is disaggregating the indicators into sub indicators, mapping it to all the government schemes and interventions the ministries drafting understanding as to what is it that is the vacuum the critical gap area and, and uh, identifying the reform areas reform action plans and believe me all this is being done in terms of extreme uh, engagement with the state governments finally the ownership has to come from the states the policy makers and this is the kind of action plan that we are creating next I'll leave you with this one. So what has been the benefit of national MPI as a, as a tool, as a policy tool for India, the largest, you know, the challenge that we had, and we have surpassed that challenge also through a very systematic process, is creating some kind of a legitimacy at the highest level. So as Niti Aayog, we have the mandate of developing, of computing the poverty estimates, the poverty numbers, but what does one do beyond it? It just cannot be a simple report, a simple statistical analysis. And that is where we are, we are, we are working with every state government uh, in order to sensitize our highest policymakers, the political executive at the state level, because it's a federal again structure, the bureaucracy, the executive which implements the policies in terms of the nuances of the MPI, the methodology of the MPI, the utility that such a potential that such a tool has potential in terms of informing and uh, you know creating a, a scenario of corrective action so this is what we've been doing yes, in terms you, of i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt could you please wrap up because yes yes, I, yes I, I know that i'm not the best example because it took more time <laughs> than initially allocated but probably if you wrap up in order to allow the other countries to share their experiences Surely, surely, Daniel, I was learning the tricks from you into, into going a little beyond that. But anyways, so yes, the kind of sensitization workshop and ownership and legitimacy that we have created is through our uh, complete outreach with all the 36 states and union territories. That's one thing. Definitely as a tool for, uh, you know, leaving no one behind, because this is being very quickly used as a tool by state governments to allocate resources, to create reform action plans, targeted interventions, to target those districts where we see the highest uh, and highest numbers of severe poverty. New initiatives in front of you. So many states are now coming up in order to, you know, who, who are taking the insights from the national MPI to inform their, to inform and tweak their policy intervention, for example, of going to further below the district to the block level, using creating surveys and census in order to, uh, to, to monitor multidimensional poverty at a far more granular level. So this is the kind of trigger that MPI, national MPI has created. And uh, we are very happy and we are looking forward to the next edition of our, uh, when, we, when we compute and come up with the 2020 numbers for national MPI. And therefore we, we are looking for, forward to the huge gains that India has made in the past five years. So that's all from here. Uh, from here. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. This was a tremendous, tremendous experience of the alignment of the multidimensional poverty measurements with public policy making. And at the same time, something that you mentioned at the beginning, which is very powerful, the governance of the measurement is very important in order to find allies, in order to uh, develop specific public policies. And at the same time, this is a proof 
that how a well disaggregated multidimensional poverty index following, let's say, a common or a transversal national perspective is a very important tool in order to achieve convergence in socioeconomic development. And this is something very, very important. That so thank you very much. And we understand that this is going to be tremendously important to see how the policy reforms are going to implement the evidence of the MPI as a targeting factor of such a very, very uh, effective policies that you shared with us. Thank you very much to our colleague from India. And I would like to go uh, to Africa right now and to invite first to Mrs. Lisi Chicotti, the Chief Statistician of the National Statistics Office of Malawi. And you have to remember that the Malawi Multidimensional Poverty Index Report was published in 2021 and showing very important features that I'm sure uh, Mrs. Chicotti is going to share with us in her presentation. So thank you very much. Um, Ms. Chicotti, uh, the floor is yours. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to share with you what uh, Malawi has done so far as regards uh, um, my dimensional poverty. Uh, the Malawi National Statistical Office adopted the National My Dimensional Poverty Index as an official poverty measure to complement uh, the traditional monetary poverty measure, which is still being computed at the moment. Uh, the reason to adopt this complementary tool uh, is that a, a My Dimensional Poverty Index uh, makes visible the joint distribution of deprivations endured by each individual in our macro data by identifying the profile of each person's simultaneous uh, livelihood challenges uh, in order to measure the intensity of my dimensional poverty. Overall, our national MPI provides not only a headline figure, but also an associated information platform uh, on uh, national and subnational conditions across population groups and uh, joint deprivations in different dimensions of poverty. The first Malawi Multidimensional Poverty Index report was officially launched on 9th December, 2021. And uh, this report was produced with support from UNDP uh, and the OPHI team. And it used a data set from the fourth integrated household survey, uh, in short, we call it HS4. And uh, this survey was conducted in uh, 2016 to 2017. Uh, import importantly, to mention that uh, this survey is also used to compute the uh, official monetary poverty figures uh, in Malawi. So, uh, this allows the report to showcase the complementary nature of both approaches to poverty. So we have the uh, dimensional poverty, and then we have the uh, monetary poverty. Source is the same, the integrated household survey. Now, the Malawi uh, dimensional poverty index report provided a detailed analysis by region, district, place of residence, sex of household head and age group, and uh, which identified the poorest groups and specific areas of deprivation to ensure effective prioritization and inclusion of all disadvantaged people. This underpins the pledge uh, in the preamble to the SDGs that no one will be left behind. And actually, the desire expressed in the Malawi 2063 vision um, not to leave behind those segments of the society that are vulnerable and marginalized. Uh, our national MPI is quite comprehensive and captures four dimensions of poverty that are key to consider when it comes to evaluating the living conditions of our people. So these uh, four dimensions are the first one is health and population. The second one is education, then environment, and the last one is work. 
And uh, these dimensions are measured using 13 indicators. Uh, these indicators are sanitation, nutrition, drinking water, food security, literacy and schooling, uh, school attendance, electricity, rubbish disposal, housing, asset ownership, unemployment, job diversity, and child labor. The dimensions and indicators constituting the Malawi uh, MPI were inspired by the Malawi Growth and Development Strategy for 2017 to 2022, and clearly reflect national priorities as outlined in the Malawi 2063 vision. According to our national MPI, a person is regarded as being dimensionally poor if he, he or she faced a number of weighted deprivations greater or equal to 38%, uh, which is equivalent to a person suffering deprivations in at least one and a half uh, dimensions at the same time. So the situation is deemed intolerable and mandates taking public action to redress it. I would like to uh, stress that uh, some of the questions underlying Malawi uh, my, my dimensional poverty index are indeed ordinary and are already included in census questionnaires uh, with very few exceptions. The Malawi NSO has plans to include extra variables into census data uh, and potentially explore the possibility of having a reduced version of the Malawi MPI computed with uh, this information. We are well aware that the variables which are used to come up with nutrition indicator, that is uh, wasting, stunting, and underweight, require some additional measurements and uh, intensive training of enumerators. So this cannot be done during uh, census training. They also require some tools, for instance, scales and headboards, which cannot be procured for census activity. Uh, this is the reason why our aim is to have a partial, but still powerful and informative version of our MPI based on census data in the future. Uh, finally, allow me to announce that NSO is planning to start analysis of the second Malawi Dimensional Poverty Index report uh, in March uh, this year to update the indicators using data sets from the fifth uh, integrated household survey, which was conducted in 2019 to 2020. This will allow NSO to perform analysis of changes over time in terms of uh, my dimensional poverty in Malawi to inform policies that are effective and useful to help lift people out of poverty in our country for good. And finally, uh, last but not least, I would like to thank the organizers of this side event for giving us this opportunity for inviting the Malawi NSO to be part of this uh, big event. Thank you so much. On the contrary, Elise, we are very proud to have you here and to see how there are some, let's say, uh, smart ways in order to integrate the MPI uh, information with census information and this approach of having, let's say, a core MPI from census information. We have to remember that in the 2020 census round, we have many challenges due to the pandemic that are going to diminish or to decrease the financial resources which are allocated to national statistics offices in order to perform census. So, so this trade-off of having many questions in, in order to approach the MPI could be solved in a very efficient way, having a core MPI from a census-based information and at the same time to have a continuous measurement from the traditional service, which are the source or the official source of the MPI. Thank you very much for these efforts. And we are looking forward to the publication of the updating for the year 2021 from the Malawi National Statistics Office. And provided 
that you have been very generous with the time. I would like to pass by to Nigeria or Nigeria, under which uh, we are going to, I'm sorry, uh, we go to, uh, in this case, to Sri Lanka, under which uh, we have the opportunity of our search to have Dr. Diana Tilani Tipawansa, the Deputy Director of the Department of Census and Statistics of Sri Lanka. Remember that the Sri Lanka National MPA also launched in the year 2021 and is both an innovative measurement in its own right and also is the first MPI in the world that directly and fully links the measurement of child poverty with national multidimensional poverty indexes using office drawer approach and at the same time, the knowledge that Sabina has spurred in these measurements of uh, children multidimensional poverty. So please uh, to our colleague from Sri Lanka, the floor is yours and thank you very much in advance for your contribution. Thank you. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to join you at this vital discussion on using multidimensional poverty data to leave no one behind. I wish to share with you today some thoughts and insight in relation to multidimensional poverty measures in Sri Lanka on behalf of the Department of Census and Statistics. This is clear across the SDGs and prominently so in the case of goal one to eradicate poverty in its all forms with the concept of no one behind. The Department of Census and Statistics has been measuring poverty in the monetary approach based on cost of basic need method since 2002, using the information collected from household income and expenditure survey. The incidence of poverty in Sri Lanka has declined from 2002 to 2016 from 22.7% to 4.1%. Despite the sharp decline at the national level, poverty pockets are still in existing across districts. Sri Lanka has also encountered incredible economic hardship due to the COVID pandemic. Consequently, the pandemic has exposed the multidimensionality of poverty going beyond the simple measures of monetary values. Now it is the time for the country to understand the new vulnerabilities faced by households, particularly households headed by women and differently able persons, households in areas with low digital literacy and accessibility, and the children in the country. In this context, multidimensional poverty measures would be an invaluable tool to identify these special social groups who need other support to overcome the poverty and to be used in national development agendas. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to say that the DCS has compiled the national multidimensional poverty measures as official statistic for the first time in the history for the year 2019 in collaboration with Oxford Poverty Human Development Initiative and the UNICEF country office in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has published two multidimensional poverty indices, National Multidimensional Poverty Index and Child Multidimensional Poverty Index for children aged zero to four. These two indices are useful to formulate policies to alleviate national poverty and so further focuses to eradicate the child poverty in the country. The latest finding reported that the approximately 16% of the total population and 42.2% of children under the age of five are multidimensionally poor. It will be updated and published regularly, report as SDG indicator 1.2.2 and be used to com complement the monetary poverty measures. In addition, the DCS will be encountering the next census enumeration in 2023 and the census schedules, including some living conditions information, have already been finalized. 
Further plans are being made to compile MPIs using this census data, considering some proxies. As a long-term plan, the DCS hopes to incorporate MPI variables into the future censuses. It is anticipated that through this milestone incorporation, it would facilitate the most reliable direct findings of MPIs at the lowest administrative level in the country. We are extremely convinced that this will encompass a powerful tool for evidence-based policy decisions to eradicate poverty in multidimensional aspects with no one behind principle. Thank you. Thank you very much to our colleague from Sri Lanka. And we are very happy to see how the MPI became part of the official statistics ecosystem in Sri Lanka. And at the same time, how you are planning that the forthcoming in Sri Lanka provides the information in order to have a very thorough and very granular and disaggregated MPI information. So then, uh, my apologies for the mistake in presenting uh, our colleague from Sri Lanka. And right now, we would like to go to Nigeria, under which uh, we are going to have the opportunity to uh, the disaggregation of information in a new way in the multidimensional poverty index. That's why we have many things to learn from Nigeria that has the most disaggregated MPI survey to date in the field as we speak. And that's why I'm honored to invite Dr. Simon Harry, the Statistician General, General of the National Bureau of Statistics of Nigeria to present how Nigeria is going to update and to refashion the National Multidimensional Poverty Index and how the Nigerian Statistical Offices is working with other agencies in order to coordinate actors across the government in order to use this information. Why not? as a very effective way of grasping evidence in order to orientate public policy to alleviate poverty in Nigeria. So Dr. Simon, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, uh, Daniel. And thank you, Sabina. Thank you, all the coordinators of this program for the great opportunity uh, granted me to share Nigerian experience on the conduct of the MPI, and indeed also learn from other countries all over the world. So it's a great opportunity to me. Uh, indeed, I must start by saying that uh, the Nigerian circle system operates a very complex one, just like the presenter of the Indian circle system they mentioned, because as a system, we have a 30 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, and as such, we have the responsibility of ensuring that whatever national survey that we conduct, the search is conducted in collaboration with all the state bureau of statistics across the country. And so the arrangement becomes a, a lot uh, difficult and complex. But then with technical support from partners, I think some a, a larger extent we have been getting it uh, a lot easier so I will say here that uh, the MPI in Nigeria has not, uh, is not new because our engagement with OFI uh, on the MPI started as far back as uh, 2012. And uh, with our first attempt at computing the index com uh, completed in 2014, uh, indeed under the framework of the Human Development Index. And so that was our first uh, experience and then this was uh, repeated again in 2017 with uh, the disaggregation down at, to the subnational level, ensuring that the disaggregation took into cognizance the uh, 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 position of every state of the Federation, the tax states of the Federation, and indeed the federal capital uh, territory, making it 37, 
and to some extent, the disaggregation also goes down to uh, the sub uh, zonal level. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, for the first time, the MPI presented government with the opportunity to view poverty differently from the conventional income poverty method that we are used to, uh, which is the Nigeria Living Standard Survey. And this was extremely informative and instrumental in designing the present administration social uh, intervention program, such as uh, the homegrown uh, uh, feeding program, the government uh, enterprise empowerment program, and uh, indeed all other social uh, programs that government has improved to uh, uh, alleviate the poverty of the Nigerian citizenry. And so to a lesser extent, the MPI has been an implementation in Nigeria across the country for the past six years. Significant gains have been made across uh, but following the rollout of several programs designed to address different areas of deprivation, deprivation as shown by the MPI data. However, the absent, the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic significantly eroded some of the uh, uh, gains that we have recorded, particularly starting from the year 2020. While several initiatives have been introduced, a response in order to address the impact of the pandemic on the household, it is clear that uh, a lot more remains to be done. This in addition to government policy to lift 100 uh, million people out of poverty has really informed the launch of the latest round of the MPI survey, which was launched in the year 2021. And for the first time this time around, we are conducting a standalone MPI survey. And uh, like I said earlier, the conduct of it covers the entire country with disaggregation of uh, data at the senatorial level. As you know, each state of the federation has three senatorial districts. And so the disaggregation is done according to the senatorial district. And that goes to you uh, presuppose that um, we have to disaggregate it up to 109 senatorial districts. And the sample, we're able to draw a sample size of over 56,000 households nationwide. So far, so good. The data collection for this exercise was successfully completed in January, early January 2021, sorry, 2022. And the data processing and analysis are currently uh, underway with a lot of uh, progress being made on that. Already consultations and indeed engagement with relevant stakeholders and partners are ongoing for us to be able to ensure that we have a robust plan for the dissemination and use of the results. And this we consider as very, very key because uh, the result of the survey has to be disseminated to all spectrum of uh, uh, society in the country. And so with the launch of the uh, report plan for May, uh, uh, so far from the progress of we recorded on the analysis, the process enjoys every strong support and commitment from the highest political level of government in Nigeria. Indeed, uh, the Honorable Minister of uh, Budget and National Planning led a delegation to brief the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and uh, we see the vice president driving the entire process for us to ensure that the results become a major tool of government uh, uh, planning and indeed resource allocation going forward. So as a stack system, we I must say that we're extremely excited at this uh, prospects and the, uh, indeed the uh, water shares that have been recorded. And uh, we're looking forward to the coming months with great enthusiasm as we can see real commitment and desire on the part of policy makers to ensure that the opportunities are presented that by the MPI are fully examined to uh, uh, come up with policies and the programs that will help to transform the nation's economy. Uh, let me at this juncture once again uh, appreciate Dr. Sabina and her team for the huge um, advocacy efforts and technical support 
uh, uh, to Nigeria in recent years because our visit to the country some few days but really helped to add the value to the efforts that we're making to ensure that we have the buy-in of government as far as the importance of the MPI that, that uh, uh, is concerned. Equally, for putting together a platform as such as this to enable uh, us learn and indeed share experiences, because I was li listening with keen interest presentation from other countries, and I was able to actually identify where we're doing well and where we're still having some gaps. And I think with this kind of uh, opportunity, we may have to go back to the drawing board with a view to seeing uh, uh, those areas that we are having some gaps so that uh, we uh, make some amends as quick as possible. And the lesson learned from our visit to Oxford, even though personally I was not opportune to uh, be there, but then my colleagues came back and they shared their experiences with us, with me, that was very, very uh, wonderful which took place last uh, November. And then again, the discussion with colleagues from other countries, because according to the report I received, it was quite a very, very useful forum where experiences were shared among countries such as uh, Colombia, Mexico, India, and uh, Panama in particular. And uh, indeed, that has been quite uh, invaluable to the conduct of the exercise in Nigeria, and indeed the development of uh, uh, strategy for dissemination an application of the findings. So I must say here that uh, we're looking forward to sharing the results of this uh, important survey as far as Nigeria is concerned with colleagues on this uh, platform so that they're uh, working together and indeed learning from each other, we can uh, ensure that our citizens are given the best opportunities possible to live. Thank you. And the spirit of the SDG uh, principles which says leave no one thank you dr harry thank you once again for this and for the that, attention that was thank you that was a very enlightening message and we team up with you uh, thanking the generosity and the uh, very mindful way under which Sabina, Anofi, and the MPPN are helping several countries in order to be very effective in measuring MPI. And we congratulate, in this case, Nigeria and the uh, National Bureau of Statistics for performing a standalone MPI survey, something which is going to be very, very uh, enlightening to see the precision of the MPI and the regional disaggregation. And provided that we are looking forward to uh, listening or to reading the main results of this standalone MPI survey, we are very, very happy that for sure the MPPN is going to organize another meeting in order to describe the precise results of these important efforts of Nigeria. And provided that, I would like to uh, give the opportunity of our colleagues from uh, Palestine, uh, under which uh, in many other countries, uh, in the case of Palestine, uh, we include employment in the multidimensional poverty indices, as in the case of Colombia. That's why I'm delighted to invite Jawad Al Saleh from the Palestine Central Bureau of Statistics to share the main updates in the multidimensional poverty index and some of the policy applications that probably he's going to have the opportunity himself to share with us. Please, uh, to our colleague from Palestine, the floor is yours. Good morning and good afternoon for all of the audience. Uh, let me first give you a quick brief about the history of working on the MBI here in Palestine. Basically, we start working on, on the framework of the concept in 2014. So first, we have to create a national commission, which includes the line ministries, civil society, research institutions, and some experts in the field to be sure that we are in the right track. So in 2014, we managed to put or to propose what is called a national framework for the poverty, for multidimensional poverty here in Palestine. And this concept has to be consistent with the SDG 
1.2 in addition to our national policy agenda 2017-2022. So our national framework, after a lot of discussions, we have many scenarios and we learned a lot from the experience from, uh, from the world. So in our national framework, we proposed to be to, uh, the, to be the national NBI uh, consists of two spaces. The first one, which is the economic well-being of the Palestinian people, and the another space was uh, a social well-being. The economic well-being was captured by, by one dimension, the existing national monetary poverty line, which was conducted and set in 1997. For the social well-being, we followed, we followed a right-based approach following our basic law to adopt the mapping of the social well-being. So by the end of the day, we managed to agree on seven dimensions with the 2022 indicators. As I said, the economic one depends on the national monetary poverty line for the social well-being, which is focused on the basic law. So we included education, employment, housing condition, health, safety, freedom, and personal freedom. Here, when we put these indicators or dimensions, we take in consideration we have to make empowerment for women in all these dimensions. So, after we managed to put the uh, proposed framework, we have, we have the opportunity to put the framework and the concept before we start collecting the data. As you know, this type of information, you need one source of data for these informations. Of course, since we have economic and social well-being, we agreed to use the household expenditure and consumption survey. After we agreed on this, we collected the data in 2017. As you know, this type of service needs at least one uh, year calendar to collect the data. After that, and after revising the data and the indicators, we managed to publish the first report about the national MBI in 2019 as the first report. After we publish it and discuss the result with the audience and the line ministries and the, uh, the commission, we send the concept and the proposal for the government. And we have a commitment from the government in 2019 to uh, this line to be used as the national poverty line for everything here in Palestine, either for a planning, for action plan, for any ministry, or on uh, for everything. After that, we start working on the what is called a national strategy for multidimensional poverty alleviation. But unfortunately, the pandemic hit. So here we have to stop and uh, first uh, understand the impact of the pandemic or the COVID on the, our lives and on the indicators. Shall only use the indicators which already defined before the pandemic, or there is a need for any integrating additional indicators or more indicators to be added for these dimensions to reflect the pandemic. Unfortunately, as I said, this type of information, we need to conduct the household ex expenditure survey again. If we are wait, uh, we wait until we collect the data, we can't start working on the strategy and the action plan before 2024. So what we did, as you know, we have a social, uh, what is called a rapid assessment or a quick survey to capture the impact of the COVID on our lives. We add uh, basically the social indicators in addition what we notice that affecting these indicators. I will give an example, for an example, because of the pandemic, there is a lockdown, okay? What is going to affect, basically will affect education, employment, health services. So which additional indicators we have to collect to be included in either in the concept or in the integrated indicators were already used. So for example, in the education, 
we have a mobile education or the inter in, uh, internet education. So how we are going to measure the impact on the quality of education for those children who are uh, learning from the internet? So we have to add these questions. So to start working on the strategy and not waiting the survey, let's uh, we agreed, let's say to uh, follow what is called the simulation approach to see the, the impact of COVID on these indicators. And now we are in the process of evaluating this issue using the simulation techniques, basically the market simulation. We have additional information about these indicators, either from them, these quick surveys in addition to administrative data to be sure that which, indicate, uh, which variables have to be integrated to the concept. And this, way, this is for to capture the impact of COVID according to the, to the census. Unfortunately, our census is conducted 2017. Even we have a lot of information, including in the census, we are afraid now. If we use that at this stage, will be misleading for our strategy and action plan and for our, our policy issues. So we believe that let us make our exercise using the current survey in addition to administrative data to capture the impact of the COVID and include it in the, uh, in the action plan or in the first draft of the, our strategy for alleviation, the multidimensional of poverty, it will be more valued, just one second, uh, more evaluated for our uh, li uh, people lives here. And I will stop here and thank you very much. I'm sorry Kevat, to interrupt such an interesting presentation, but we believe that those challenges of being more precise of how the pandemic affected education or health is something very important. And we face ourselves this challenge in Colombia and the integration with administrative records was a way. And in your case, you have a novel methodology that we will have the opportunity to know better in some other opportunities in the forthcoming months. And following the very precise presentation from our colleague from Palestine, I would like to give the floor to Mr. and Dr. Dennis Mapa, the Undersecretary of the National Statistician and Civil Registrar General of the Philippine Statistics Authority to share his presentation regarding how Philippines is facing the challenges of the MPI and at the same time, how is using the MPI in order to target public policy, more importantly, to alleviate poverty and to leave no one behind in our country. Thank you, Dr. Mapa, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The Philippines congratulate the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network for organizing this side event at the 53rd session of the UN Statistical Commission on using multidimensional poverty data to leave no one behind. This is a timely discussion as each country starts to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which exacerbated deprivation, not only in health, but in various aspects of our well-being. The pandemic also posed a lot of challenges in our various statistical activities and programs, but it did not hinder us from improving our products and methodologies. Just like other countries affected by the pandemic, the Philippines experienced an increase on its income-based poverty incidence for the first semester 2021 to 23.9% from the 21.1% in the same period in 2018, or an increase of 2.6 percentage points. This translates to an additional 3.88 million Filipinos sliding to poverty as a result of the pandemic. For one, in monitoring the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG Target 1.2, that is to reduce by half the proportion of women, men, and children living in poverty in all its dimension, according to national definition by 2030, the Philippines through the Philippine Statistics Authority is further refining the multidimensional poverty index methodology that we have initially developed in 2018, which produced national estimates for 2016 and 2017. The Philippine MPI is envisioned 
to complement the country's official income-based poverty statistics, especially now that the COVID-19 pandemic affected almost everyone's income, health, education, and employment status. For the country's legal framework, the law providing for a Magna Carta of the Poor or Republic Act Number no. 11291 states that the multi-dimensional poverty index, which is to be determined by the Philippine Statistics Authority, shall be considered in determining the poor. Also, in 2019, the Community-Based Monitoring System or the CBMS Act was approved, which will further cater to the data support to the Philippine MPI, as well as for other SDG indicators at a more granular level. The CBMS is a census of households undertaken by the local government units with the participation of the community using an accelerated poverty profiling system in the data collection, processing, mapping, and analysis. Pilot CBMS field operations were conducted in the fourth quarter of 2021. This was done in preparation for the nationwide rollout this year in 2022. The data collected from the pilot CBMS will be an integral part of testing the proposed MPI methodology. In our continuous refinement of the MPI methodology, relevant indicators on deprivation highlighted by the pandemic are being proposed. Indicators on mobility, access to the internet, overcrowding, and underemployed and discouraged workers are now being considered in the Philippines MPI. The proposal and recommendations on the MPI methodology go through a consultative process wherein the Technical Committee on Poverty Statistics vets the methodology to ensure that it is sound and robust. All these efforts are aimed at providing evidence-based information that will aid in crafting sound and relevant policies and programs that will help alleviate poverty in all dimensions and sectors. The Philippines appreciates its opportunity to share our current efforts and initiatives on the MPI. We look forward to learning from other countries' experiences in developing and implementing the MPI. Again, thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Dr. Mapa. And it was a very interesting way in order to have this community-based follow-up of the multidimensional poverty and it's something which is very sound and the precise way to describe the indicators of the measurement of the MPI. And following this very interesting presentation from the uh, Philippines, I would like to move again to Uruguay, uh, under which uh, we are going to see uh, our dear colleague, Dr. Diego Aboal, the technical director of the National Institute of Statistics, in order to see how Uruguay uh, could share with us the views and plans in order to work on multidimensional poverty measurement. Por favor, Diego, tienes la palabra. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you for, for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you, uh, Juan Daniel. Um, thank you, Sabina, for, for your leadership and, and also for the technical support that OFI is going to, to give uh, the National Institute of, of Uruguay. Um, we, uh, and, and also to Ricardo Nogales for inviting me um, to be part of, of this side event of um, to, to discuss uh, the multidimensional poverty uh, um, indices in the, in the, in the region. Um, we're in, in the first stages of uh, generating a multi a multidimensional poverty index for Uruguay. Um, I will share a presentation here. Uh, okay. Um, so we are we are we are just starting to work. Um, to construct a multidimensional poverty index in, in Uruguay. Um, uh, uh, MPI was, uh, was included in, in the strategic plan of the National Institute of Statistics of Uruguay in, in the year 2020. 
Um, and we have been working with 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 partners uh, in in the in the last uh, few months uh, to to begin the process of of constructing um, uh, MPI for Uruguay. Uh, we have the, the support of uh, UNDP, uh, UNICEF, and and also OFI in this in this process. Uh, we are just starting uh, to work. Uh, toward uh, this goal and we expect to finish um, the process during the year 2022 this year uh, and to start to publish uh, this information in the year 2023 um, so some tentative dimensions uh, that that uh, that we are considering to include in in, in, in in the MPI in the case of Uruguay are, are similar to, to some of the dimensions that, uh, that for instance, Colombia has in, 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 in their uh, MPI. In, in particular, um, we plan to, to include conditions, uh, housing conditions and, and basic services, uh, health, childhood and, and youth conditions. This is very important for Uruguay. Uh, most of the of the poverty measured by, by the income method uh, is concentrated uh, in, 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 in childhood. So this is, this is important to, to have this perspective. Um, and this is why we also have the, the, the support of, of UNICEF to, 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 to have this, this, this approach uh, as part of, of uh, the MPI. Also, education uh, is, is very relevant for, for the country and unemployment. Um, the, the potential uh, uses that uh, the country uh, envisage um, after we conclude this, this exercise is, uh, in first instance, to, to use the MPI as a targeting tool for multidimensional uh, poverty reduction. This, this will be uh, the main the main goal uh, of the MPI, but uh, but also it, it will be very relevant as as an input uh, for design and, and revision of uh, the safety nets that the country uh, already have. Um, uh, so we can we can uh, use these uh, safety nets in in the future to avoid people uh, entering uh, poverty. Also, um, it will be very important uh, for geographical targeting as a geographical targeting uh, tool for, for social programs. So uh, for us, the, the, the geographical dimension uh, will, be, will be very relevant. Um, and in this sense, the country um, is, is uh, preparing for, for a new census in the year 2023. So uh, we want to, to include some 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 of these uh, variables uh, in the in the in the census, so we can have a, a disaggregation of of the of the index uh, uh, along along uh, some some uh, geographical uh, dimensions in in the country. We are also uh, in parallel with uh, with a relatively traditional census. Um, we are working towards uh, an admi a, a census based on, 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 on administrative uh, registers. So uh, we are also um, identifying uh, uh, possible variables in the administrative data in Uruguay. Uruguay has, has a very good uh, administrative data. Um, so we can also use this administrative data to to, to, to uh, have some of these of the variables uh, that are relevant to, to compute uh, the MPI. Um, so basically this is what we are uh, doing right now. We are just in the first stages um, and we have uh, a lot uh, to, to learn from, from, from you um, and, and in particular from, from Colombia that we think is a, is a very good example uh, for Uruguay um, as well. So thank you again for having me um, and I will be uh, learning from, from all of you uh, today. Thank you.
Muchas gracias, Diego, por esa eh, interesante presentación que deja muy claro los desafíos de Uruguay eh, at the hour of eh, getting deeper in the measurement of the multidimensional poverty index. And we are sure that the census information and the integration with administrative records is going to be highly, highly recommended as a way in order to be effective in the implementation of the multidimensional poverty measurement in the country of Uruguay. Thank you very much for your presentations. And uh, we are moving and I want to provide my apologies because I was not very strict with the time allocation because the topics were very, very exciting. But currently we have the opportunity to uh, invite Mr. Charmark Farah, the Director General of the Somali National Bureau of Statistics, uh, that is going to share with us the main work in mm -hmm. the designing of the multidimensional poverty index for Somalia. Please, Dr. Farah, uh, my apologies for the time length that has passed since the officially allocated time for you, but we are looking forward to hearing your more and visible remarks regarding the MPI measurement in Somalia. Thank you, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Juan. Uh, uh, I'm going to be very brief since Somalia has not launched uh, the, the multidimensional poverty index. So it is a pleasure and a privilege to be part of this important event. And I am among these distinguished panelists. Thank you to the organizers of the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network. Somalia has always had, you know, since 1960, uh, an, a Statistics Department, but uh, the Somali National Bureau of Statistics was established as an independent agency only in 2020. And we have used that opportunity to, as uh, is autonomous status, to invigorate the importance and production of statistics in Somalia by setting ambitious, tar ambitious targets, including the launch of the National Multi Multidimensional Poverty Index. Somalia has also uh, participated in the past in the annual technical summer school organized by the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Uh, we are also very pleased to be announcing that multidimensional poverty index is part of the 2022 voluntary national review of our SDG, SDG1, uh, no poverty. Somalia will also be uh, reporting in the global SDG indicator database towards the indicator 1.2.2. This measure is expected to align, to be aligned with the global MBI structure. So Maya's national uh, development plan, which is also compliant with the poverty reduction uh, strategy, calls for the multidimensional approach to poverty reduction. To this end, Somalia's National Bureau of Statistics part is partnering with the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative to develop a national multidimensional poverty in this tailored to the Somali context using the 2022 Somali Health and Demographic Survey, and as well as the data that's currently being collected as part of the Integrated Household Budget Survey. We will be launching the national MBI 2020 in 2022, and will continue to update it with uh, mixed results in 2023, and also be continuing to augment it with, by embedding MPI-related indicators in the, in the plant census in, at the end of 2023 or early 2024. This will enable us to monitor the progress of poverty reduction and better target our policies to ensure that no one is left behind. Somalia is also currently in the midst of a HIPIC initiative. Uh, we have already achieved the decision point in 2020 and are expected to reach the completion point in 2025. Uh, although uh, this is not a con the multidimensional poverty index, it's not a conditional, the launch of the MPI will contribute to the achieving of the relief completion point uh, at, the, at, at that stage. We'll, we are currently working with our counterparts in the ministries, uh, uh, including Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, to ensure that the mission, the, 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 this measure is used to improve the policies and catalyze 
the poverty reduction in Somalia. Somalia is also working, so SNBS or the, the Bureau is working to increase the production of statistics to overcome the national data constraints will, which will contribute to decision making and you know, better informed decisions in the future. It was really very interesting listening to the past uh, two hours uh, almost of uh, the diverse experiences from the countries that have already launched the MPI. And we look forward to engaging with you all as part of the South to South network. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Fada. It's just so exciting um, to hear both about the autonomous status of the statistical agency in Somalia, how you've included the MPI in the VNR, and we'll be reporting it in SDG Global Database, but also really the thoughtful process going forward of having annual update, of having it in the census. We really look forward to learning from you as, as you go forward. This is just a real exciting innovation. Uh, friends, we are almost done. Uh, we have heard from 12 statisticians, and there's a real buzz in the air from all of their work and diligence and energy to fight poverty in all its forms using information and evidence, but alongside a strategic focus on policy engagement with statistical agencies. So I'm very pleased at the closing to give the floor to Gonzalo Hernandez Lucona, the director of MPPN and also a representative from OFI in Oxford, um, which acts as a secretariat. So Gonzalo, over to you for this session, closing words. Thank you, Sabina. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, also to Juan Daniel for chairing this side event. Uh, it has been very important to listen to your experiences about the statistical efforts you have made in your countries to improve the lives of those who have been left behind. I mean, it is difficult to think of a true development when it is not inclusive. Uh, but unfortunately, the world is not inclusive and COVID-19 has made all these worse, as said by Mr. Napa from the Philippines just um, minutes ago. When the pandemic affected especially women, the informal sector, those who did not have water or did not have access to health services or did not have good internet connections or had multiple deprivation. Therefore, to leave no one behind, we need to detect who and where are those with more difficulties. And the way of doing this is through statistics. Statistics is about listening and understanding people. So let's make visible those who are not always visible. And in this respect, the MPI is a very useful tool to do this with the help of good statistics. You talked here about the importance of using censuses and to make efforts to estimate MPIs at the regional, municipality, districts, or even at the block or the firm level, as has happened in Colombia, India, Mexico, Ghana, and Costa Rica, Malawi, Nigeria, uh, or Uruguay very soon. Um, or you talk about the segregation of groups such as child poverty as happened in Sri Lanka. We also learned from, from you about the MPI processes in Palestine and Somalia. We, we thank you to be here. We thank you for sharing your experience. We welcome you to be part of this network. The MPPN uh, is truly a place where we exchange experiences and learn from similar countries about measuring poverty in a multidimensional way, as Diego said um, already. Uh, we have interesting events this year. So for instance, in September, we have our usual UN General Assembly uh, events. Uh, and it's always very interesting to listen to to the people there and to high level politicians there. We have our annual event on between the 20 and the 22nd of June in Cairo. So we are happy to announce that. Uh, you're welcome to come. We also have uh, in May, between the 9th and 13th of May, our second ex -ed leaders program, which has been very su successful, that's been online, and it's led by Michelle Mouchet. Applications are open and all details uh, in, the office, in the office site. Thank you all the speakers for your inputs and your time. Thanks to the OFI team as well, Corinne, Anna, Ricardo, Maya, Kellyanne, Alex, Jacob, Emeline, and of course, uh, to Sabine Alcaire. 
Uh, I tend to use Sabina for your uh, those events. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Oh, Juan Daniel, I turn it back to you. Um, so thank you, friends. And um, we've had some questions about the materials for this event because the PowerPoints and the videos were so riveting for different participants. So that all of you know, the materials will be posted both on the mppn.org website and on the ophi.org.uk website. If participants share their videos, then we will post those. And there is also a full video on YouTube that will be linked from those websites. Um, we also look forward to learning from others who are not yet speaking in this event, but are doing innovative work that we can learn from. So thanks to everybody, and especially to Juan Daniel uh, and to all of the speakers and panelists. This event is now closed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Savina. Thank you, Thank you Savina. Thank you, Juan Daniel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Juan Daniel. Gracias.